Stayallday.com. Now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unified philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is the pussification of society. This could be sports society, but maybe we'll just make keep it at society period. But uh, before we get into any of this, let me remind everybody or inform you that I send out a text message every single day, guaranteed to have you focus sharp and on point. It is called Daily Motivation. I send out one every Monday. As well, that'll do the same thing for your week. I call that one the Monday motivation. All right, we came up with very creative titles for these. All you got to do to get into my text community and get these messages is text me at my number, 305-384-6894. It's free to join my text community. Once you get in, we'll tell you what your options are, how often you want to hear from me, and all of that. Secondly, work on your game university. That is the place where I do all my coaching. It's the only place you can work with me directly. If you would like to have me as your coach, have me as a uh, fellow mastermind member, have me as someone who, with whom, you can bounce off your ideas and share with me what you're going, doing and get a direct expert feedback from me on what you are working on. We focus on four specific areas here in the university, mindset, strategy, systems, and accountability. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. You can schedule a time to get on a call with me or somebody on my team. We'll talk about where you're at, where you want to go, and if we can possibly help you, we'll tell you how. And you also have the option of joining one of our group programs. So we got a couple of different options for different people depending on the level that you are at. Again, that is all happening at workonyourgameuniversity.com. Time. So with all that out of the way, topic here today, again, is the pussification of sports society. Actually, I don't know if we're going to make this sports society. We might just make it society period. I'll decide by the time this episode comes out, you'll know because you'll see the title of the episode. But when I say the pussification, what do I mean? So that's P-U-S-S-Y dash vacation. So what I mean when I say the pussification, and uh, I would tell you to pardon my language. I'm not going to tell you that because y'all see the little E next to the title of this show. So we use explicit language over here at Working Your Game. If you didn't know, now you know. What I mean by this is it, when I say the pussification is a euphemism, that the, in, the environment that I come from, the community that I come from, we use that word pussy. We were not referring to uh, female genitalia, but it is kind of a euphemism for it because it's about people just being weak and soft and weak, soft and moist when they don't need to be. <laughs> That's what it means when we say that. the pussification of sports society. All right, so if any of you didn't know what that word meant, that's what it means. I, the pussification is a made up word, but that's what it means when somebody uses that word. Males tend to use it more than females. But I've heard some females use it as well in stories that won't be told here on the show. But anyway, let me tell you the story that actually led to this episode, because there's a specific situation that occurred that led to this. It was an appearance that I was making on somebody else's podcast. And we're going to get it. We're going to go deep into this here. So there's a podcast that I was set to appear on. It's called Mastering the Mind. Now, this show is not a very big show from what I saw, the research, but we do outreach. I do outreach over here, working your game to a lot of different people who have platforms. Sometimes they are bigger than what we have here, working your game. Sometimes they are smaller. The show is significantly smaller than what we have here, working your game. But I still reached out because even if the show does not have the same audience that I have, that doesn't mean they don't have some people in their audience that should know about what I'm doing. So it's not about the size of the audience. It's about uh, do they have the right type of people? And this is something that I've talked about in some of my uh, videos that you may see on YouTube. Also talked about it here on the show. Like you don't, the reaching out to people or getting your message in front of people is not just about getting in front, in front of as many people as possible. It's about getting in front of the right people. So if person A has an audience of a thousand people, but none of them is a perfect fit, and person B has an audience of 100 fit people and they're all perfect fits, which audience should I get in front of? I should get in front of person B's audience because they're perfect fit people, not just a bunch of random people that person A's audience has. So I'm saying all that to say this is Mastering the Mind show. Many of you probably have not heard of it. They're not, again, they're not a very, not a very big audience, but the show is called Mastering the Mind. And according to their description, the description of their show, it says the hosts are aspiring, aspiring sports psychologists who chat with elite athletes, coaches, and sports psychologists to understand the role that the mind plays in sports, how to achieve optimal performance, fulfill your potential, and perform at a high level, close quote. That's the the description that they give of their own show. 
Now that show sounds like, just reading that on the surface, excuse me, a perfect fit for someone like me to appear on. This is a perfect fit. And this is the reason why we, over here at Work On Your Game, we reached out to this show and said, hey, here's who Dre is. Here's what he's done. Here's his background. Here's what he talks about. Maybe he should be a guest on your show. And they said, that's a great idea. Let's have Dre as a guest on the show. So this is all arranged. This is all agreed upon. I was set to appear on their show. Perfect fit. Given my background, given my current area of focus again, I'm not in the directly in the sports world anymore, but my background is as an athlete and everything we do here at Work With Your Game is based on taking tools that I learned and applied as an athlete and translating them to the business world. So this is actually, again, as I said, a perfect fit. That's why we reached out and why they, when they heard what we had to say, they agreed. They said this is a perfect fit. So here's what happened. The day before I was set to appear on the show, well, the, to record the appearance, it, when it actually comes out is way after we record it. But the day before I was set to record my appearance, they canceled my appearance. What happened is they sent an email to my assistant saying that, unfortunately, we have to cancel your appearance because uh, we've been doing our research on Dre, getting ready for the, the episode, and we found that some of Dre's values do not align with our values. Now, our, who they're referring to, is the show actually has three hosts. We're going to get into that uh, a little bit in a second. And the person who was reaching out to us was, I guess, acting as an assistant in a way, but this is a female. She was one of the hosts, and then the other two hosts are males. So who knows who, what one of the hosts was, but we're going to we'll go into some deductive reasoning in a second on that. So they said they read something on my website that had, uh, so actually that's not what they said. They just canceled. And then what happened is I told my assistant, she tells me about this that day, like, hey, these people canceled. And I said, show me the email where they canceled. She showed me the email. And I said, I said to my assistant, because all they said was we're canceling because some values don't align. That's all they said. It was a very vague message. I told my assistant to write them back and ask them, what specifically are you referring to? Ask them what, okay, you want to cancel? Fine. But tell me what specifically, what value of mine? I don't know how they know my values. What value of mine does not align with your values? What exactly is your issue? I thought they might have picked up on something where I talked about a social issue like a transgenderism or, or some conservative or liberal issue or Donald Trump or BLM or you know something like that. I thought I would have no problem if somebody decided they don't want to have me on the show. With that. Actually, I would have a problem. I probably would have aired them out too, but I wouldn't have been as surprised as the answer that I got back from these folks. You want to know why they canceled? You want to know what the reason was? The misalignment of values that they found? on my website that caused them to cancel the appearance. Let me tell you what they said. They said they read something on my website that causes concern for them. Now, again, the person writing us back was the female on the team. And she said, someone of one of our hosts found some concern with this concept, with this point that you made, but she didn't say which one, she didn't say who. She, again, it was, it was kind of vague and it was, it was very, it was just pussified is the whole point. Is the reason why I'm saying, what, reason why I titled this episode what I titled it. They said that there was something on my website in which I noted that I wake up at 3.45 in the morning without an alarm clock. Now, this is true. I do wake up at 3.45 in the morning without, this morning, as a matter of fact, I woke up at 3.45 with no alarm clock. That's a truth. That is what I do. Now, although sometimes, as a, I will say, sometimes I do use an alarm because I have a young son who sometimes interrupts my sleep. So sometimes I do use an alarm, but uh, most of the time I do not. Here's what their producer said, the person who was emailing us, and she's one of the hosts of the show, but again, the other two hosts are males. This is what she said. I'm going to read what she said verbatim. Okay, so I'm quoting her now. This type of information, 345 and no alarm clock, makes it seem that he, that's me, is a better person for doing these things compared to those who don't. As sports psychologists, we are trying to move away from narratives like this. If any of us have doubts, then our policy is to not go ahead with the podcast with that particular guest. It's unfortunate but we need all of us to be comfortable with doing the podcast, close quote. Okay, so that's what they said to us, that they, they feel that me saying I wake up early in the morning makes me seem like I'm a better person than people who don't wake up early in the morning. I've never heard anything like this. this is, I've never heard anything like this. But this is what they said. Again, this is, this is not a joke. This is what they said, and they literally did cancel the appearance. And they said they're sports psychologists. What the hell that has to do with anything? They're trying to move away from narratives like this. And this is not a narrative. It's the truth. A narrative is a story. It's a version of events. A truth is what actually happened. I'm, it's not a narrative that I wake up early in the morning. It's the fucking truth that I wake up early in the morning. But anyway, 
So this language is completely off. This person, again, they're trying to sound smart, but they sound stupid. But anyway, let's keep going. If any of us have any doubts, I'm just rereading what they said. If any of us have any doubts in our policy is to not go forward because all of us need to be comfortable with doing the podcast. So some one of their hosts, let's get clear of where we are here, folks. We're just framing the situation. Uh, again, I'm just in the introduction here. We haven't even gotten to the first point. If any one of their hosts is a female who's writing us, and she said one of the hosts was uncomfortable. So by deductive reason, that means one of the males hosting this show. And that matters because when I say the pussification, usually, usually I wouldn't refer to a female as being a pussy. I would refer to a male as being a pussy. So one of the hosts, is not, which is not her, is one of the two males. They're uncomfortable with the fact that I say I wake up in the morning because it makes it seem like I'm better than someone who doesn't wake up early in the morning. Okay. Again, her wording. I'm just reading what she said. That they are not comfortable, so they won't go forward with that guest. So that's why they canceled on me the day before. Now, this is foolish on many levels that goes beyond just their personal decision to not have me on the show. And I'm going to get into all of that today and how this right here is not really about these folks. Because if I really wanted to just uh, go at them and just bash them, then I would. But I have no reason to bash them. And I'm going to get into that as well. Uh, and I'm going to get into today how this is. Again, a reflection of a bigger issue going on in our society that's much bigger than these uh, generally as a, a in a big picture, small fry. And my attempts to uh, send society in another direction. Now, I have an opposition going against me like these folks right here or whoever taught them to think this way. See, it's not about their show in particular, because on a factual level, this show here, Work On Your Game, my, my show has a much bigger audience than theirs does. We get more listeners in a month than this show has had in their history. Uh, that's just the truth. I'm not saying that to bash them. I'm not saying it as a, a dig at them. It's just the truth. I don't need to be on their show. But the fact that they booked me and then canceled on me and gave this flimsy explanation got my attention. And I'm the type of person who turns everything into material. So here it is. I'm taking this situation and turning it into material to serve my own purposes and to further help you understand uh, what we're about over here at Work On Your Game, and hopefully this informs and entertains you at the same time. So let's get to point number one. Topic once again is the pussification of society. Number one, you must, everyone listen to me, stop avoiding, shunning, and walling yourself off from people with whom you disagree. Don't do this. Do not avoid, shun, and wall yourself off from people with whom you disagree on any reason on any subject. One of these hoes disagree with the fact that I wake up early in the morning. Okay, why not just bring me on the show and talk about it? And that would actually make for some great material. I mean, again, if, if, I would think they might have a better disagreement than that, but that's, that's what you're disagreeing with, that, I, that it makes me seem like I'm better than other people. I didn't say that I was. I just say I wake up early in the morning. It's a, it's a fun fact. You know, I appear on a lot of podcasts. I've been on probably 300 different people's platforms over the last eight years, between radio shows, YouTube shows, TV shows, and uh, podcast shows. I've been on about 300, maybe a little bit more than that. And oftentimes, I would say in about 40 to 50% of them, about 40%, the host will often ask me early in the conversation, Dre, tell us some fun fact about you that's not in your bio. Because in the bio, you just tell the stuff that makes you look good. You know, I got this many, I got this much content out there. I got this many listeners to my show. I've written 33 books. I got four TED Talks. I played basketball professionally. And all the stuff that makes you look like a superhero. But then they say, well, tell me something that's not in your bio. Tell me a fun fact that's not in your bio. Because it's kind of a way to humanize you, kind of knock you down a peg in the eyes of the audience because you look like this untouchable superstar if they read your bio. Because everybody's bio makes you sound like you're just this amazing, perfect person. So I will say something like, I won't say something like I wake up at 3, 45 in the morning because that kind of makes it sound, again, a little bit more like my bio sounds. And maybe that's what this guy was referring to. But I'll say something like, well, I, I did a, uh, a hot dog eating contest once and barely ate any hot dogs, which is a true story. Or I can come up with something else funny about myself that, again, knocks you down a peg. That's something that people ask all the time. But the whole point is you don't wall yourself off from people with whom you disagree. You actually engage with them because that makes for an interesting conversation. To see people actually have a conversation about something in which they don't see eye to eye, as long as they can do it respectfully, that's great. Do, you know how, do any of you know how a child develops a strong immune system? Any of you as a kid or works around kids, you know the kids are always getting sick, right? And then they get home and they make their parents sick. How does a child develop a strong immune system? By getting exposed to the germs in the environment. That's how kids develop immune systems. But the way you develop an immune system is to get exposed to the germs. Your immune system gets strengthened when you are exposed to something that could be dangerous to you and you build up the strength to deal with it. 
But you can't get strong against anything if you're never exposed to it and you hide from it. Now, you can't get strong that way. That's how an immune system develops, by dealing with the challenging elements that make it stronger because you have no choice but to get stronger to deal with what you're in front of. This is why athletes get bigger, athletes get bigger and stronger muscles and stronger cardiovascular systems by what? Not by avoiding the gym, but by being in the gym. And they challenge themselves physically, and that's how they get stronger. That's how it works, everybody. So when you avoid elements that challenge you, then you're actually making yourself weaker because not only are you not going against, not, not only are you not exposing yourself to the element that would challenge you, which doesn't mean you're avoiding it forever because eventually you're going to run into it and you won't be able to run away. You're not going to be ready to deal with it emotionally, let alone physically. Also, you have just lost a little bit of trust in yourself because every time you choose the, the pussy route, as I explained in the introduction to the show, you make yourself a little bit weaker because you're telling yourself subconsciously that all right, anytime I see something that challenges me or something that might challenge me, what I'm going to do is turn around and go the other way. Well, there comes a point in life you can't keep going the other way. There is no other way to go. You're boxed in. You got no choice but to deal with the situation in front of you. See, you, you can't keep running from stuff. So don't wall off yourself or shun anything that you disagree with. That's, that's a stupid way of dealing with things in life because eventually you can't run anymore. Then what you going to do? This is generally, going back to my, uh, my point here about how kids develop their immune system, this is generally what a vaccine is supposed to do, right, in a manufactured way. A vaccine is supposed to give you a little bit of the, the virus or the sickness or the cold or whatever it is, and your body sees it, beats it up, and develops a immunity to it because the vaccine introduces a little bit of it so you got stronger. All right, we're not even going to go, we're not even going to go into that. Let's just move on to the next point. All right, it's also developed naturally, all right? When you get exposed to things, you can develop a natural immunity. Do something. Many people these days are not developing any type of resistance to anything that they mentally and emotionally do not like. Many people are not doing this. Their immune systems are not getting stronger. And when I say your immune system, I'm not talking about dealing with sicknesses and viruses. When I say your immune system here, I'm talking about your emotional immune system, your mental immune system. I should probably do a whole episode just on that concept alone. Many people are not developing strong immune systems these days. You know why? Because many of you have been conditioned to completely avoid anything or anyone that is not on the same page as what you have decided to believe or to think. And I'm taking a note here. So, so I'm telling y'all right now, so y'all can expect that to come. Your mental and emotional immune systems, there's an episode coming on this topic. All right, any of you listening to this who has a podcast, don't be stealing my shit. All right, so that topic is coming. So, all right, so again, your mental and emotional immune system, that topic's coming in the future. So, See, this is the reason why I do the show. Sometimes I come up with ideas for the next one while I'm doing the current one. Many of you have been taught, okay, this person doesn't believe what I believe here, so we should just uh, ban them, cancel them, shut them down, shout them down, don't let them come speak on my campus, uh, give them a negative label. Uh, anytime they try to uh, share anything, just uh, cuss them out and don't let them, uh, don't let them share or say anything. Just completely shut this person down and shut them out. All right, this is a stupid way of thinking. And unfortunately, many of you are being taught this by uh, accredited professors at colleges and universities, people who are supposed to be smart enough to teach you better than this. Unfortunately, they're not. Actually, as a matter of fact, many of them are smart enough to teach you better than this, but there is being mandated to them that they have to in order to keep their jobs. And listen, everybody got bills. So sometimes people will sell out their principles for a paycheck. And there are a lot of people out there doing it. I'm not one of them. So... Many of you have been conditioned, again, stay away from anything that you can possibly disagree with. Don't engage with anyone who disagrees with you. And this is where society is going. This is where society's at. It's not where it's going. This is where it's at. We're here right now. And again, these things that you have decided to believe or think, and somebody disagrees with them, you don't want to talk to them, much of these things that you believe or think, you wouldn't believe or think anymore if you allowed it to be challenged by an intelligent person who knows how to ask the right questions. See, many of you have beliefs in your head right now that if someone actually challenged those beliefs and had a conversation with you and asked you some questions, you might realize that you don't actually believe those things. You don't even know where you got them from. You don't even know where you got those beliefs from. You just believed it. Don't even realize why. Don't even realize how it can make sense to you. But you just decided that's what you think. Because many people allow their emotions to control their intellect. It's a bad formula. All right, it leads to at least to dangerous outcomes and dangerous situations in life. It leads to wars. It leads to terrorism. It leads to a lot of stuff that we don't want. Moving on to point number two. Today's topic, once again, is the pussification of society. Number two, 
Speaking specifically to the challenge laid out by the fools at this, what's this podcast pod, pod, called? This podcast called, this is called the Mastering the Mind. It's, it's ironic that the show is called Mastering the Mind and they show such little uh, e- emotional and mental toughness in, by doing what they did. You know, they had just said no when I first reached out and I would have said, all right, fine, we would have moved on. I wouldn't even have even noticed it. My assistant would have caught the no answer and we would have moved on and I wouldn't even have known that it happened. As a matter of fact, but the fact that they said yes and then canceled at the last minute got my attention. So speaking specifically to the challenge laid by these fools at this podcast, any person who is what any of us would deem as quote unquote successful, any of you who sees yourself as successful in any aspect of life and anyone who you would see as successful in any aspect of life, let me, let me offer something and you tell me if you agree or disagree. A person who is successful in any area usually has done lots of things that most people have not done and never will do. Isn't that what makes you successful? Isn't that kind of the definition of success? Success is really a relative term, right? Successful is a relative term. So if there's a bunch of people in a community who are making $50,000 a year and one person starts making $100,000 a year, that person is the, the successful, financially successful person in the neighborhood because they're making twice as much as most people make, all right, $100,000. Now, some of you are listening to this, and if you made $100,000 in a year, you would be panicking, and you would be in dire straits because your lifestyle costs at least $250,000. $100,000 a year would not be success to you. But again, success is usually a relative term. Success is relative to the people who are around you. So anyone who is looked at as successful by others looking at you or you looking at others, usually it's because they're doing something everybody else ain't doing. That's what success is, right? Doesn't that just make sense? Listing out your accomplishments or your habits that have led to your success, whether other people agree with those habits or not. But if they're the, ha- they're the habits that you believe have contributed to your success, which is again, what they saw on my website, I listed that I wake up early in the morning on my website because I do wake up early in the morning. I've been waking up early in the morning for a long time. And when I tell people that I do, often people note that, they question it, they ask me about it. it it's interesting to them because most people don't do that. It's a habit of mine that I believe allows me to do some of the things that have led to my success. It's not just you know, waking up early in the morning means there's a bag of money waiting for me before everybody wait, else wakes up. But I like to wake up early in the morning. It's a personal habit that contributes to the way that I operate. Right, that's just me. And again, every human being is different. But the whole point is when you list out the habits that have led to your success, at least what you believe have led to your success, this is what they saw on my website. This is why high achievers are high achievers because they do things that most people don't do. That's the point. High achievers usually have a list of habits and a list of normalized behaviors that most people around them do not have, or most people, period, do not have. That's the reason why they're a high achiever, because they do this thing that most people don't do. Any of you who's in a business where you make uh, sales calls, like you literally get on the phone and call people, the high achieving people usually are on the phone more often than the people who achieve a little bit less or a lot less. The athletes who are high achievers in a sport usually are spending a little bit more time in whether in the gym, working on their games, doing something that most of the other athletes in the sport who are not as high achieving as them are not doing. High achievers usually have habits other people don't have. That's the fucking point of being a high achiever. You have some habits other people ain't got. Because if you had the same habits as everybody else, well, guess what? You would also have the same outcomes as everybody else. So for them to say, Dre, you listing a habit. That is different from most people, obviously, by deductive reasoning. That's what they're saying. You're listening to this random habit that other people don't have. I said I woke up at 6.45 in the morning with no alarm clock. They would have noted that. But the fact that it's 3.45, that's a problem. Okay. It makes other people feel like they're not as good as you simply because they don't have the same habit. Okay. Well, you can look at that from many different angles. Of course, you got, you got the pussy angle that they look at it as, which is, oh, you're making it look like you're better than other people because you wake up early in the morning. Well, Motherfucker, there are some things that I do that most people don't do. That's the reason why you're about to have me on your show. Because your show is about high performers, elite athletes, and people who've done things that most people ain't done. All right, isn't that one of the reasons why you said yes in the first place? Because I have some things about me that are not normal. All right, that's one of the things that makes me a high achiever or quote-unquote successful. That's the point, isn't it? <laughs> isn't that the point to extract from this person how, why, when, what, what led to this? That's what you want to find out. Not, oh, I'm not going to have you on because you have these habits that make me uncomfortable. 
that makes it makes no sense whatsoever. All right, let me ask you: You think these people went to college? <laughs> they went to school. Do you think they learned that, learned this this way of thinking? That guarantee you, they didn't get it from you no. Know, they didn't learn this from some entrepreneur. They learned it from some college professor, probably with purple hair. But anyway, you look at this in a lot of different ways. You could also look at it as, damn, maybe this habit that this guy has. Maybe this is something that someone who listens to the show may want to incorporate that could possibly help them out. So they could bring me on the show and say, Dre, listen, let's just start here. We looked on your website and you say you wake up at 3.45 a.m. with no alarm clock. Why do you do that? Let me answer. When did you start doing that? Let me answer. What advantages do you think someone who's listening to this could extract from adopting this habit? Let's say somebody else wanted to do that, Dre. What value do you think they would get from doing something like that? Let me answer the question. Maybe there will be something of value that someone in their audience could get from hearing something like that from somebody like me. But if you won't even engage with me, you cancel me being on your show, then guess what? Nobody can benefit from it. So these people don't even realize, they don't even know what game that they're in. Because see, having guests on your show does not mean you need to agree with everything that they say. Because if every guest on your show is in complete agreement with everything that you say, then what the hell do you need guests for? You understand what I'm saying here? It's like if I had a show and one day I will have a different feed, I'm going to always keep this show as long as I'm in the game. But one day I'm going to have another feed where I actually have conversations with people, where I interview people and we just have conversations. I guarantee you, I will bring people on the show with whom I disagree, where I have some fundamental disagreements with them on certain topics, at least. I will have those people on the show. And I would never, ever only have a show, I mean, what would be the point of me having a show where I'm just bringing on people where we agree on everything? That would, wouldn't be very interesting. It'd be interesting on some levels because we, it would just be somebody saying the same things and I'm saying just in a different way. But I'm going to bring on some people where we disagree on some stuff. And we're going to hash it out right there on the show in a respectful way, but we're going to do that. Why? Because what's the point of me just bringing on people who agree with me? If these people knew anything about the game that they were in, I'd be the perfect guest for them to bring on because then they could challenge me on my points and let's see where it goes. But again, the pussification of society, these people don't want to challenge anybody on a point because they probably don't have the fortitude to do so. And they probably are afraid of how I might respond to them. I would respond to them in a negative way. I, would, oh, I know how to stand my ground. I know how to articulate any point that I've made. Anything I've, I've put out publicly, folks, I'll stand on it. All right, you can challenge me on anything. Email me, text me, DM me. I'll, I'll stand on anything you had heard me say publicly. Use my words against me. If they wanted to do it, they could have did it. But they didn't do it. And let's remember the point here. See, the point of bringing people on a show, when you are interviewing people, the point of it is not for you, host, to feel comfortable with the guest. The reason that you do a show is to serve the audience. The purpose of me doing this show is not to serve myself. It's not so I feel comfortable with the subject that I'm talking about. I record episodes of this show to serve you, the listener. That's the reason that I do it. I talk about subjects that I think you want to know about, that I can tell you want to know about because I can tell about the comments and the responses and just the things that happen around me in my life. And the people who I talk to, okay, I know that I need to make an episode about this subject because that's like the third time I heard somebody say this thing and this thing is incorrect. And I'm going to explain why it's incorrect. I'm going to explain the correct way of looking at it. And I'm going to explain why. I, that's the way that I think about how I put content out. I got to give people the things that they need to know. Not the things that I just want, not just the stuff I want to talk about. If it's just what I want to talk about, then I'll just keep the show to myself. I'll just, keep the, I'll just record videos and keep them on my phone. Right? Why I got to put it out to you for? The purpose of having a show is to serve the audience, not to serve yourself. So when a host says something like, I'm not going to have this person on the show because I'm not comfortable with them. Motherfucker, you don't even understand why you're in business. You don't even know what business you're in. You're not in the business of serving yourself and your comfort. You're in the purpose of serving the audience's needs, not yours. If you won't engage with a person, then nobody can benefit. This is why these people are idiots from this, this show. Mindset. What was the name of the show again? Mastering the Mind. Uh, their show is literally called Mastering the Mind, and they're showing complete mental weakness in this entire process. This podcast is allegedly designed to help people learn more about mindset as it relates to sports. Uh, is there a more qualified person on the planet to talk about that than me? Is there? Who, who is it? I have more accomplishments in sports than all of their hosts have accomplishments in their respective fields put together. Again, I'm not saying that as a dick. I'm just telling y'all the truth. That's what it is. Again, they said on, in their description, this is what they say in their description, that they're aspiring sports psychologists. 
I'm not, a, I'm not an aspiring anything. I am an accomplished in my thing. I have accomplished the thing that I'm doing. I'm not planning on doing it. I'm not dreaming to do it. I'm not aiming to do it. I've done it. So when I say I have more accomplishments than they have, that's what I mean. But they don't want to have me on because my presence and my habits might make somebody else feel like less of a person. How fucking stupid is that? If anything, if someone's presence and accomplishments and achievements and habits might make me feel in some way inferior, all right, that's first of all a failure of my mindset because, again, and the show is called Mastering the Mind. <laughs> okay? What I'm going to do, if I'm around somebody whose achievements and their accomplishments and maybe even their habits dwarf mine, you know what I want to do? I'm going to get curious. I'm going to find out what the hell is this person doing? How the hell did they do that? Or why the hell do you have that habit? And how can I take some of that and use it for myself? I'm looking at it as an opportunity. I'm looking at this opportunistically, not egotistically. See, these guys are thinking about their ego. Oh, well, you saying you wake up 345 in the morning might make it seem like you're better than other people who don't. Who are these other people who they're referring to? Because see, I don't think they polled their audience and said, hey, what do you think about having this guy on who says he wakes up at 345 in the morning with no alarm clock? What do y'all think about that? I don't think that happened. I think the guests, I mean the hosts rather, they made a decision on their own. Okay, I feel uncomfortable about it. And then they, they, they pass it off on other people. Did y'all catch that? Let me say that again. I want to make sure y'all caught this. Because see, this is what I mean when I say the pussification of society. Instead of just coming out and saying, this is how I feel, they pass it off on other people. So their saying was, him saying that he wakes up at 3.45 in the morning might make other people who don't wake up early feel uncomfortable. Who the hell are these other people? I haven't been on your show yet. So none of your audience knows who I am. So the only people who could have been thinking that are the hosts. There's only three people. So don't pass it off on other people might feel that way. Just come out with some balls and say, this is how I feel. Dre, I don't want to have you on my show because it makes me feel this way. If he would have said that, he still would have been a pussy, but at least I would have respected him for it. You see, then when you, you take your opinion and you pass it off on, oh, well, other people might feel that way. What other people? None of your audience knows me. None of my audience knows you. So who are these other people you're referring to? There aren't any. See, this is what I mean when I say the pussification of society. Let's move on to point number three. Topic once again, the pussification of society. Number three. Very interesting to me that a show that is based on sports psychology, literally, that's what the show is about, sports psychology, the mindset that helps you perform in a highly competitive environment like sports. Right, sports is a highly competitive environment. Sports is a binary environment where binary means everybody cannot win. In business, everybody can win. I can make a million dollars. You can make a million dollars. In sports, we can't both win. There's one trophy. Either I'm getting it or you getting it, but somebody's going home a loser. That's sports. It's a binary environment. It requires a high level of performance, requires a high level of mental toughness, and ain't no participation trophy. Somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. That's how it works. It is player versus player. Team versus team. Winner, loser. This is called a finite game. So any of you heard of this whole thing called the infinite game? That's cool and that's great. Sports is not that. Sports is a finite game. Winner, loser. Infinite game means everybody can win. Finite game means one winner. Everybody got it? So these people call themselves sports psychologists or they're aspiring sports psychologists. And I'm pretty sure they'll probably make it <laughs> to being sports psychologists, right? You need a mindset to perform in this highly competitive environment. They want to get away from a quote unquote narrative that a high performer, that would be me, and a high achiever, also me, does something that most people don't do because it might make them, the hosts, not the audience, but the hosts, feel lesser than a high achieving individual. So first of all, this is not a narrative. What is a narrative? A narrative is a story. And I already told you all. I did a whole episode on this exact concept. Let me pull the episode up. Because, see, I, see, I give you all the receipts. See, when I tell you all what I'm talking about here on the show, I often refer you back to other episodes just to let you all understand that I don't say things here on this show to uh, protect my or defend my ego. It's my show. I can say whatever I want. I refer you back to other episodes of the show so that you understand the things that I tell you here on this show are not brand new concepts. I'm not making them up just to save face in the midst of my recording. Like I'm just talking off the cuff and I just want to say something to make it sound like that's what I believe. No, I will refer you to my receipts, my past episodes where I've talked about these things so that you know I'm not just making this up on the spot to make you think to make it make you think like I'm making a stronger argument than I'm making. I'll tell you. Episode 1485, that was damn near uh, 2000, what was that? What was it? 1300 episodes ago, which is what? 
four or five years ago. The topic was controlling the narrative is for losers. I have it right here. Episode 1485. Go look it up. Controlling the narrative is for losers. I don't play the narrative game. A narrative is a story. I don't need to tell you any stories. I do tell stories, but I don't need to tell stories. Again, stories are for the losers. Losers tell stories. They got to explain to you why they lost. Winners tell stories when they want to. Losers tell stories because they have to. I never had to tell a story. Everybody understand what I'm saying here? So when they frame me saying I wake up early in the morning as a narrative, it's not a fucking narrative. It's the truth. And you want to see my sleep app? I'll tell you. I'll show you. The app will tell you what time I wake up every day. I'm using the app for almost 10 years. It'll tell you what time I wake up. Let me pull it up. I got my phone right here. So let's pull it up and let's see. Because they're calling this a narrative. <laughs> All right. What time do I wake up? So I'm looking at the woke up time. All time. And they give you this, they give you this graph. So if you're watching this on, um, if you're looking at this on YouTube, you can't really, can't really see it too well. All time by average, by average. Saturday and Sundays, I usually wake up a little bit later. So Saturdays and Sundays, my wait, average wait time over the last 10 years. No, this is since 2000. This says since 2016. So we got seven years. I was using it longer than that. But let's say the last seven years. Sunday average wake time, according to this app, is 6.57 a.m. Saturday is 6.42 a.m. Those are my late times. And these days I wake up a lot earlier than that. So my, my times are trending downward. But the other days, Monday through Friday, 4.20, 4.12, 4.10, 4.14, 4.24. So I've progressively gotten up earlier and earlier over the years. I just keep getting up earlier. So over the last months, let's see, one, two, I don't know what time, the oh, last six months, my average wait time has been 4.35 a.m. in the last six months. Let's go in weeks. It's been, because a couple of weeks ago I was at a conference where I was waking up a little bit later. So these, these numbers are actually a little bit off. The whole point is, I wake up early every day. <laughs> All right, that's the whole point. The sleep app doesn't really build my case strongly enough, but because I get up earlier, I've been getting up earlier and earlier over the years and more. But the whole point is, this is not a narrative, it's the truth. What game do you think you're playing when you say a high achieving person who has achieved success has habits that most people don't have, so we don't want to have them on because it might make other people feel lesser? Well, what fucking game do you think you're in? That's the whole point. A high achieving person. If I was to have a conversation with who's a high achieving person, if I was to have a conversation with LeBron James about how he takes care of his body, I guarantee you he got some habits that I don't have. Because physically, he's performing at a level that I ain't performing at right now. I think I'm pretty good, but he's probably at a, a little bit higher than me. He probably got some habits that I don't have. Would it make me feel worse because he has those habits? No. I want to know why he has those habits, and I'm going to say that's interesting. Maybe there's a couple things I can borrow. If I was to interview him and have him on my show, there's a bunch of things that a bunch of you could get from that conversation, even if. Those things dwarf what I'm doing. But I'm not looking at it with my ego out in front. Oh, well, it makes me feel like he's better than me because he does things that I don't do. Who the fuck cares what I feel? The show ain't for me. The show is for you. When you get into sports, again, it's team versus team, player versus player, winner versus loser, no participation trophies. When you go in the game and your opponent has done things in their training that you have not done in your training and they kick your ass all up and down the court, the field, the track, or the pool, are they wrong for doing so? Did you feel like shit after the game? Let's say you go play in the game and your team, we got a lot of players who listen to this. We got athletes listening to this. We got parents of athletes listening to this. We got coaches listening to this. If your team gets their ass kicked all up and down the field or the court in a game, do you feel bad? Because, uh, oh, let, me, let me back up. Are they wrong for you feeling like shit after the game in which you got your ass kicked? Uh, yeah, I know you feel like shit because you got your ass kicked. You should feel like shit. But is it their fault that you feel like shit? No, it's your fault because you got your ass kicked. Would, would it be wrong for them to explain how they train harder than you after they just beat you? No, it wouldn't be wrong for them to explain it. As a matter of fact, I'd be all ears. I want to know why I just got my ass kicked. All right, what am I missing? <laughs> Help me out. Right, would it be wrong for them to write a book and tell you all the things that they do that make them the performer that they are as opposed to the performer that you are? I would read. I'd be the first one on the bottom book. I'd get it signed. I signed the person who kicked my ass. Let me find out what happened so I don't have that happen again. I would be happy to know about that stuff. Wouldn't you be happy to know about that? So maybe you can make some adjustments to yourself and your team or your child so they can stop getting their ass kicked as often as they've been getting their ass kicked. So this is just about different angles of looking at things. We don't have to change any of the, the, the facts of the situation. Let's just change the approach from which we're looking at it. I personally would choose the latter. 
I want to know after I get beat why I got beat, what my opponent is doing that I'm not doing, so I can get better next time and I can do the ass kicking instead of receiving the ass kicking. This is what mental toughness sounds and looks and feels like. Mental weakness sounds and looks and feels like what these fools did. This is, what, this is called mental toughness, folks. What I just defined, what I just described, that's mental toughness. It's also called intelligence. If you're getting your ass kicked by an opponent, you don't just keep showing up getting your ass kicked and making it seem like something's wrong with them for kicking your ass. No, you got to figure out what you're not doing as a vetting that's positioning you to get your ass kicked. But I guess this is an, is this old school? Am I old school for thinking this way? Or somebody tell me if I'm going crazy or if I just have an old school mindset. The times have changed and this is a new way of thinking. I want to make something clear for all you uh, under 30 folks who are listening to this right now. Something being quote unquote old, whether it came from your parents or somebody who's a generation or two ahead of you like myself or whatever, something that's traditional, something that's been around since maybe before you were born. Just because it's quote unquote old does not mean it is bad. New does not necessarily mean better and old does not necessarily mean bad. Sometimes the traditional thing is the exact thing that you need. And the new thing is the exact thing you need to stay away from. So if this is an old school mindset, being mentally tough and being intelligent, then everybody needs to be old school. Because the new school mindset of being mentally weak, staying away from things that you disagree with, this is going to lead to a weakening of our society as a whole. Our society as a whole is going to get weakened. And weak societies lead to hard times for the people who live in them. And those of you who are relatively younger as a group, uh, you got much more time. You got more time on the planet to live than your parents do, which means the more weak the society is, the longer you got to live during the hard times because you're younger. Right. So you got more years, theoretically, which means you're going to have more years of struggle because you're going to be living in a beat up society because it's built by a bunch of weak people. My role here today is to make sure you are not contributing to that weakness of society. That's my job. And your job is to make sure that the message that I'm giving here today is heated and you're not contributing to the pussification of society as we recap today's topic. Again, this came from a canceled podcast called Mastering the Mind, a very ironic title of these sports psychologists who canceled the appearance because I told them or they read on my website that I wake up early in the morning. They said this type of information makes it seem like he's a better person compared to those who don't wake up early in the morning. And we're trying to move away from narratives like this. One of our hosts was uncomfortable with that concept, so we canceled the interview. So this is just pussy on every single level. Point number one, stop avoiding, shunning, and walling yourself off from people with whom you disagree. All right, this is, this is stupid. Way you develop a stronger immune system, a physical one, a mental one, or an emotional one, is by engaging with things that are challenging to you, not running away from them. Number two, speaking specifically to the challenge laid out by the fools of this podcast. Anybody who you would deem successful usually have a bunch of habits that other people don't have. That's the fucking reason why they're successful. So you shouldn't shun them and get away from them because they have habits that are different. You should get curious and find out why they have these different habits and how someone else might be able to implement and incorporate them, which will help them raise their level. But when you keep those people away, what are you doing? You're keeping everybody average. So these people are doing the exact opposite of what they're supposed to be doing. Number three, very interesting to me to show that it's based on sports psychology wants to uh, keep away from a person who is playing the game at a high level and telling you exactly what I'm doing to do so. And they're calling what I'm saying about myself a narrative. It's not a narrative. Narrative is a story. It's not a story. It's the truth. So what game do you feel like you're playing when you get into sports? Sports is player versus player, team versus team, winner versus loser. It is a binary, meaning there, there are no participation trophies. Everybody cannot win. Everybody is not a winner. There is a winner and there are losers, period. That is the way sports works. This show is based around sports, high performance sports people, allegedly. At least that's what they said in their show description. But they are uh, operating with a participation trophy mindset. So uh, that tells you the value of what they're going to be putting out into the world. When you get into sports, this is how it works. So any of you who gets into the sports world, you get your ass kicked out there on the court or on the field or on the track. You should go talk to the person who whooped your ass and find out why did they kick my ass? What am I missing? What do I need to add to my game? Or talk to your coach, talk to your trainer, talk to your corner. Find out why you got your ass kicked so it doesn't happen again. You don't Make that person seem like they're wrong for kicking your ass. That's supposed to kick your ass. All right, that's the game that you're in. If you're afraid of getting your ass kicked, don't step in the ring. That's the way the game works. And all of life is like this, folks. This is not called uh, about, this is not about being better or worse than anybody else. This is called mental toughness. It's also called intelligence. But if this is an old end, rather, if this is an old school mindset, then all of you need to get old school quick. 
All that said, text me. So you're part of my text community. You're getting the daily motivation text that I send out every single day. The Monday motivation text that I send out every week. My number is 305-384-6894. Also, workingyourgameuniversity.com. That's a place where you can work with me directly and get get access. The only place where I do any coaching directly with anyone. Again, workingyourgameuniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre, all day.